As of the end of 2020, China's high-speed rail operating mileage reached 37,900 kilometers, accounting for two-thirds of the world's total mileage, far ahead of other countries. The CCP has always counted high-speed rail as one of its great achievements, and it also regards high-speed rail technology as its golden business card. It exports the technology to foreign countries along with the Belt and Road Initiative to enhance international influence. If you only look at the operating mileage and the speed, you'll think China's made great achievements for the high-speed rail. But if you look on the other side, China's high-speed rail is also number one in terms of debt and operating losses, and it has a detrimental impact on China's cargo transportation structure. Let's take a look at the operating data of China's railways. The entity that undertakes China's railway transportation services is China State Railway Group Co Ltd, or China Railway. Which is a wholly state-owned enterprise that was created by the Ministry of Railways of China and the China Railway Corporation in 2019. On August 31st, China Railway released its financial results for the first half of 2021. Data shows that in the first half of the year, the company achieved a revenue of 512.8 billion RMB. The net profit is a loss of 50.7 billion RMB, which is equivalent to a daily loss of 280 million RMB. Or 44 million U.S. dollars. In the first half of last year, due to the impact of the pandemic, the company's net loss was as high as 95.5 billion RMB. One of the main costs of high-speed rail operation is electricity. According to public data, the high-speed rail with a speed of 350 kilometers per hour consumes 9,600 kilowatt hours of electricity per hour. And that, with a speed of 250 kilometers per hour, it consumes 4,800 kilowatts per hour. The electricity price for high-speed rail in 2019 is about one RMB per kilowatt hour. Since this October, China has raised electricity prices by up to 20 percent, which will worsen China Railways' business situation in the second half of this year. As of June 30th, China Railways' total liabilities reached 5.8 trillion RMB. Its total assets are 8.76 trillion, and the gearing ratio exceeds 66 percent. The construction of China's high-speed rail relies mainly on bond issuance and bank loans. As reported by China Newsweek in April this year, the pressure of debt repayment for China Railway has arrived. From 2016 to 2019, China Railway issued 300 billion RMB of bonds per year. Of which 200 billion was used for railway construction and equipment purchases, and the rest were used for debt restructuring, which is actually borrowing new debts to repay old ones. In 2020, the amount of registered railway bonds is 210 billion, of which only 70 billion was used for railway construction, and the other 140 billion were used for repaying debts. Most of these bonds have a five-year maturity term. Since 2021. The peak period of principal and interest repayment has come. At present, the cash flow of railway transportation revenue is not enough to cover operating costs, and China Railways' daily operations still rely on financial subsidies. No need to even mention repaying debts and interest. Many local governments have shouldered huge debts because of the high-speed rail construction. In recent years, the construction of high-speed rail has been extended from the developed eastern regions with higher population densities to the central and western regions with smaller population densities. Local government officials along the routes are enthusiastic about building high-speed rail for their political achievements, and local governments have borne the bulk of the construction debts. Zhao Jian, a professor from Beijing Jiao Tong University, pointed out in an interview with China Newsweek. That the eastern regions, with high population density and developed economy, are suitable for building high-speed railways. So China Railway usually invests a bigger proportion, while the central and western regions, with their low population density and underdeveloped economy, are not very suitable for building high-speed railways. So the local governments invest a bigger portion. The construction of high-speed railway projects in underdeveloped areas leads to high levels of local government debt. While the low utilization rate and low operating income of the high-speed rail will expose local governments to higher financial risks than China Railway Corporation, the local government debt caused by the construction of high-speed rail is a black box, 
mixed with various types of local government liabilities, which have been estimated to be as high as 18.29 trillion RMB. In a previous video, we have talked about how serious local government's debts are, and it's presumed that the construction of high-speed rail is also contributing a lot to the debt. In addition, along with the construction of high-speed railways, there are also high-speed rail concept cities. Many local governments have allocated large areas of land around high-speed railway stations in the suburbs to build new cities. However, because of their remote locations, resources such as working opportunities and services are relatively scarce. The new cities have become ghost towns. These numerous unfinished projects have caused a great waste of farmland and social resources. Zhao Jian has repeatedly published articles criticizing the Great Leap Forward in high-speed railway construction, pointing out that the large-scale high-speed railway construction will impose an even greater debt burden on China Railway Corporation and local governments, and that high-speed rail will become a gray rhino that will hit China's economy. The term gray rhino is generally used to describe a highly probable, high-impact but neglected threat. The design speed of China's high-speed railway is more than 200 km per hour, and the maximum speed is 350 km per hour. Therefore, the stability and smoothness of high-speed railway lines needs to be very high. As a result, the cost of high-speed railways is two to three times that of ordinary railways. Public information shows that the weighted average unit cost of China's high-speed rail is 129 million RMB per kilometer for highway rails with a speed of 350 kilometers per hour, and 87 million RMB per kilometer for speeds of 250 kilometers per hour. The indicator that best reflects the utilization efficiency of railway transportation capacity is transportation density, that is, the average transportation turnover per kilometer of railway in one year, or the ability of each kilometer of railway to generate annual transportation revenue. In 2015, the transportation density of the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed rail was about 48 million passenger kilometers, which was the highest in China's high-speed rails while the Lanzhou-Xinjiang high-speed rail had the lowest transportation density, only about 2.3 million passenger kilometers. The average transportation density of high-speed rail nationwide is around 17 million passenger kilometers. The average transportation density of Japan's high-speed rail is 34 million passenger kilometers, which is twice the average transportation density of China's. Therefore, it still needs financial support from the government. At present, only the Beijing-Shanghai and Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed rail lines have a relatively high transportation capacity utilization rate. The transportation capacity of other high-speed rail projects is largely idle, causing serious losses. For example, the Lanzhou-Xinjiang high-speed rail only runs four pairs of high-speed trains every day, and its transportation income is not even enough to pay for its electricity not to mention other expenses, such as material consumption, repairs and maintenance, equipment depreciation, and manpower. The Lanzhou-Xinjiang high-speed rail has the capacity to operate more than 160 pairs of high-speed rail trains per day. The Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway, which has the best economic benefits, creates an annual profit of about 10 billion RMB with 220 billion assets and the asset profit ratio is less than 5%, which is almost the same as the bank's benchmark interest rate. The Beijing Xiong'an high-speed railway was put into use on December 27th of 2020, with a total length of 92.78 kilometers and a total cost of 33.4 billion RMB. The Xiong'an railway station has been built as the largest railway station in Asia, with a cost of 30 billion RMB. This railway station has 13 platforms and 23 lines. The total construction area of the station is 475,200 square meters, which is equivalent to six Beijing stations or 66 football fields. After the completion, the passenger flow has not been reported by the media. A video taken by netizens shows that there are very few passengers on the train from Beijing to Xiong'an, and the Xiong'an railway station is also very deserted. According to Zhao Jian's analysis, 
China's state treasury uses measures such as loan interest differentials to provide huge subsidies of 120 billion RMB each year to maintain China Railways' operations. And because of the high-speed rail's fare being several times that of the ordinary train, it is generally a travel option for high-income people, and ordinary people cannot afford it. This is equivalent to the state taking all taxpayers' monies to subsidize the rich. In addition, large-scale high-speed rail construction has severely distorted China's transportation structure. In order to pursue high-speed and control costs, the high-speed rail had to be designed as a dedicated passenger line. Therefore, the large-scale development of high-speed rail has brought about a crowding out effect, and rail freight has been greatly crowded out, which has greatly increased the logistics cost in mainland China. This is a huge cost brought to the national economy from just one aspect of high-speed rail construction. The market share of China's railway freight turnover volume has dropped rapidly from 50% in 2005, at a rate of three percentages per year, to only 17.1% in 2016. Since 2016, its market share has been ranked behind road and water transportation. As the railway freight capacity cannot meet the demand, China had used heavy diesel trucks to transport basic raw materials such as coal and steel for a long time. Greatly increasing transportation costs. In recent months, China's electricity curtailment caused by coal shortage has severely affected residents' lives and economic development. However, most of China's coal resources are concentrated in the western inland areas and can only rely on land transportation. The decline in China's railway transportation capacity has further exacerbated the current situation of coal shortage. And rapid increase in coal prices in the east. Although the more high-speed railways are built, the more losses there are. Chinese officials have been increasing their efforts to build high-speed railways. On October 27th, the Guiyang Nanning High-Speed Railways Blastless Track Project in Guangxi was officially launched. Guiyang Nanning High-Speed Railway is an important part of the Baotou Haiko Passage. And the main passage of China's eight vertical and eight horizontal high-speed railways, this design speed being 350 kilometers per hour. The Lhasa Ningxi section of the Sichuan-Tibet Railway was opened for operation on June 25th. So far, the high-speed rail has achieved full coverage of 31 provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities in the mainland. In addition. The Yaan Xindu Bridge and the Bomi Ningxi section of the Sichuan Tibet Railway started construction at the end of March. In August, China's easternmost high-speed rail in the Alpine region, the Mudanjiang Jiamusi High-Speed Rail, started trial operation. China's first cross-sea high-speed rail bridge, the Fuzhou Xiamen High-Speed Rail's main parts joined, and key control nodes across the line were opened. In the outline of the advanced railway planning for a powerful country in a new era, issued by the Chinese government, the development goals and main tasks of China's railways in 2035 and 2050 are put forward. According to the official goal, China's railway network will reach about 200,000 kilometers by 2035, including about 70,000 kilometers of high-speed rail. People can't help but ask, what is the strategic significance of all the high-speed rails in China? Would the CCP rather allow state-owned enterprises, China Rail, and local governments to bear the huge debts and still continue to promote high-speed rail construction? From top to lower levels, Chinese officials all attach importance to the so-called face-saving project. This is why China is known as an infrastructure manic, and it builds large projects with hundreds of billions in costs. For example, the South to North Water Diversion Project, the Three Gorges Project, etc. These kinds of mega projects can not only demonstrate political achievements, but can also provide officials with opportunities for corruption. Liu Zhijun, who became Minister of Railways in 2003. Launched a vigorous high-speed rail construction leap forward after he took office. Liu put forward the policy of railway development by leaps and bounds. He used a variety of resources to introduce and develop high-speed railway technology and carry out large-scale railway construction. During Liu's tenure, 
18,000 kilometers of railways were built, and the railways under construction are as high as 30,000 kilometers. Liu Zhijun was once known as the father of China's high-speed rail, but some people call him Crazy Liu. It is precisely because of him that caused a huge debt for the Ministry of Railways. In 2011, Liu Zhijun was investigated for corruption, bribery, and abuse of power. According to mainland media reports, Ding Shumiao, the so-called high-speed rail's number one sister, who was linked to Liu Zhijun, was accused of being illegally involved in railway projects through bidding and other means, and illegally charged a total of more than two billion RMB in intermediary fees. Ding was also suspected of bribing more than 89 million RMB to help Liu Zhijun to get promotions. Liu Zhijun was also particularly lustful. In order to meet Liu's desires, Ding Shumiao invested in filming a new version of Dream of the Red Chamber television series, and recruited a large number of beautiful actresses. If actresses wanted more performance opportunities, they would have to cooperate with Ding Shumiao and provide sex services for Liu Zhijun. From 2008 to 2010, following Liu's instructions, Ding Shumiao gave Liu a total of 49 million RMB, including other bribery money. Liu's involved amount is 64.6 million RMB. On July 8, 2013, Liu Zhijun was sentenced to death with a two-year suspension, and all his personal assets were confiscated. In addition, the development of China's high-speed rail is also closely related to Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative. And is part of his ambition to dominate the world. China actively participates in the construction of high-speed railways in many countries around the world and exports its own standards. The environmental organization in Habitat said that China's high-speed rail network ultimately involves plans to connect China with Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, and Eurasia. Railway technology website describes the high-speed rail network from Singapore to Kunming. Through this project. Beijing plans to connect Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Taiwan, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam with Kunming City in China. Supply Chain Digital website reported another example of China's global high-speed rail ambitions. It plans to build a high-speed rail from Beijing to Moscow. According to the Railway Technology website, China hopes to connect the remote western province of Xinjiang with 40 European and Asian countries through this 150 billion U.S. dollar, 3,700 mile long railway. However, countries in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia have realized the risks and are quickly abandoning the Belt and Road projects. China's Belt and Road project is facing demise, and China's high-speed rail export plan is bound to go bankrupt with the decline of the Belt and Road. Now, China's high-speed rail project not only seems to have failed to help realize its ambitions of global hegemony, it may also become a gray rhino that destroys China's economy and eventually trigger a huge financial disaster.